We are The Social Services and you are listening to the Music is Power podcast. Joining me here today in Music is Power podcast are um, The Social Services. Uh, hello there. Hello. hello. This is nice to meet How you. are you mm-hmm. today? Yeah, very good. A bit yeah, cold. Yeah, fine. Okay, but. and uh, the first question for you as I'm asking all the bands are you say, um, what is the story behind the uh, social services and how y- how your music began how you begin to to play music at all? well it kind of starts a long time ago the story um Emma and I have been friends for uh, since we were born really um but our families have been friends for three generations so you could say that the band started in like the 1800s or something yeah. <laughs> um And then uh, I met Martin when I lived in London. And then uh, he's Swedish and we're from Scotland, Emma and I. And um, so we, um, Martin and I fell in love and moved to Sweden. And then Emma came and we decided that we wanted to, to start a band together because we've all, all three of us have played in different bands. Um, but we'd never played music together. So about a year ago, we sat down with some instruments and started to make music together. And, uh, so I guess what, the story. Yeah, okay, thank you. And so, what? Uh, what about your name, the social services? Uh, do you consider yourself as a social band or something like that? Why did you choose this name? Uh, both because it's the name of the most uh, boring institution in society, like the social. Like if you don't have a job or if you can't take care of your children, the social services will step in and and make sure that uh, they do all the things that society needs but maybe doesn't want to face so we thought it was funny that uh, that we take something that's very boring and make it into something that's quite funny because they would never stand on a stage and say hello good evening Bratislava we are the social services <laughs> but we would like to and and also I think uh, we're quite happy and we're quite social as a band so we want to provide the service for people to be more social. And, uh, can you please um, introduce yourself again and uh, when you're doing that can you also say uh, who is also writing uh, the lyrics or the music about your songs and uh, is your band actually a democratic band? <laughs> <laughs> Good question. Um, yeah, I'm Lucy, Lucy Cathcart and uh, it's kind of complicated to say who plays what in the band because We kind of all play everything. We have piano, bass and drums uh, and we swap around on our instruments. Um, That's very good. Yeah, it's fun. <laughs> it's kind of a punk band thing to do, I suppose. Um, we've all played different instruments before and we get bored playing just one instrument. Um, so I guess we all play everything. It's democratic in the way that volleyball is democratic. You, you play the serve and then you change. <laughs> so uh, sometimes the piano is the serve and sometimes the drums is the serve and hello this is Martin from the social services uh, hello yeah, nice to be on the podcast Martin mostly plays drums and sometimes takes a little outing to play the piano or the or the bass or other things um, and in terms of writing the music that's something that we all do um, we don't all sit down together and start from scratch with a song um, but all three of us write songs separately And then we'll bring like a half finished song or just an idea or an outline to the rest of the band. And then we kind of we work together to build it up into into a whole song. So I guess that's one thing that's nice about our band. It doesn't feel like one person is in charge. It's not like a totalitarian regime. <laughs> um, but it's quite democratic because we all write the music and we all decide uh, and we can all play whichever instrument we want to. And, and so it's, it's nice that way. And uh, as, as already I know that uh, you live in Sweden, right? Yeah, that's right, in mm. Stockholm. And uh, what do you think about the Swedish culture of music? Because uh, as long as I know, I already have more than 40 uh, podcasts. And uh, in every podcast I play a different artist. So I uh, play more than 400 artists for now. And uh, <laughs> the half of them actually come from Sweden, so <laughs> yeah, that's that's pretty amazing. But 
You're you're living there. I never been actually to Sweden. But it sounds like you know more about the <laughs> music scene than we do. Yeah, you you are actually living there, so it, it would be nice to hear what you think about. It. Yeah, I mean it's it's a great place to live in terms of music because there, especially in Stockholm, there are a lot of good uh, live music venues uh, where you can play, and there there's always. Uh, a band playing somewhere that you can go out and see, and, and that's quite inspiring to be able to see bands in kind of small, intimate settings where you can really see see how they work. Um, the Swedish sound, I suppose, is known for being quite kind of uh, poppy and sugary, a bit like ABBA or the Cardigans or that kind of thing. Um, but there's also quite a lot of uh, like heavy metal and stuff that I've been introduced to by Martin. Um, <laughs> yeah, now now I remember. From... Sorry, sorry, but now I remember that Finland is actually something like a capital of heavy metal, and I think yeah. Sweden is actually a capital of indie music. For me. Yeah, mm. yeah, I think that's probably true. And, and I don't know. It's interesting that a country with such a small population manages to export so much music. But I think it's probably because it's it's one of probably one of the richest countries in the world and people maybe have more more freedom uh, more time, more time uh, are able to support themselves with part-time jobs and, and spend time on music and that kind of thing and that's not always possible in in all parts of the world so that's something that we're we're grateful for like we we all work part-time and that gives us the freedom to to spend time doing music and I think uh that that's quite a positive thing about the music culture here in Sweden. It feels like anybody can pick up an instrument and start playing. So it's a it's a good scene. Sometimes it's almost too uh, sensitive to trends. Uh, so it's nice that we're a we're a mixed band because what is trendy or what is cool or good in Sweden might be really crazy in Scotland, and what's well, in in the UK is really exotic, in, and so which I try to uh, reap the benefit of being a mixed mixed band. Mm. And I have heard that uh, in Sweden there are, there are lots of uh, school, schools for music. Is that that's right? Yeah, uh, you can go. I went from when I was maybe eleven till eighteen. I went to like a music school, so we had music every day instead of other subjects and then later on you can study any instrument almost for free and uh, and now when we rehearse we're with um, like almost like a school but for grown-ups like um, we've chosen to rent a room where we re- rehearse but it could that you learn welding or that you learn Italian or something it's a um, sort of a worker's uh, like how, a, how to better yourself if you if you've got a boring job? Mm, it's like a study association that you can uh, that supports people to to follow their interests. Um, so we have a rehearsal space um, that we can use that that doesn't cost us very much and um, that we use twice a week. And that there are lots of structures like that in Sweden that uh, support people and and give people ways of of uh, doing the things that they really want to do and and developing and learning more. So that's good. Yeah, thank you. I think I get the picture there. And, uh, <laughs> yeah, really. And uh, I have heard your uh, new songs. Actually, I saw that you're there from this year, from 2008. Yeah, yep. that's right. And uh, they are from your new album, or the new album will come out. Or yeah, we actually just finished recording the last uh, few bits of the album two days ago. Uh, so it's all very fresh and it's being mixed at the moment and we hope to release the album in the summer uh, hopefully in July or August um, so that's something that we're excited about because it's um, yeah I mean we we recorded for the first time last year um, last June but that felt uh, it feels like we've developed a lot since then so we're keen to record again uh, and we did second album right? Well, the first lot of things that we recorded that never really, we didn't release that in the end. Uh, it was just, we just used it as demo material and we've taken some of the songs and changed them a bit, re recorded them uh, just in the last couple of months. So this is going to be our first official album release that's coming this summer. So we're really excited about that and we're probably going to release it with a, uh, a little record label in London. Um, 
but wait, do you have, that's not. Do you have a name for the album already? No, not yet. If you have any ideas, you're welcome to share yeah, music them. Music is power <laughs> podcast. No, oh, yeah. <laughs> without the podcast, just music is power. Is, there, is fine thing. with me. <laughs> okay. Sponsored by. <laughs> yeah. yeah, something like that would be cool. So, um, I have heard, I have uh, wrote in your MySpace also that uh, you like uh, when people are singing along with you in your yeah. concert. Yeah. Uh, what do you think about uh, your your lyrics to be published? As I saw that uh, you didn't have the option of your songs to have the lyrics option, so people can see your lyrics. Oh yeah, we should do that. Um, yeah. it, we spend quite a lot of time on the lyrics of our songs because we we feel like the text is important, and so we try to write. We want to write about things that mean something. Um, so we really should put our lyrics somewhere that people can read them so that so that people can sing along. Um, because with some bands you feel like they they come up with the music and that's the main vehicle and then they just kind of make up a few words to go over the loop. Whereas we kind of put a lot of time into the text. So yeah, you're right, we should put the lyrics up so that everybody can read them. Homework we'll for tomorrow. <laughs> yeah. Sing along as well. So I have uh, also saw that um, you you have wrote that your your genres is actually alternative lyrical and melodic popular <laughs> song. What yeah. do you think about uh, lyric and uh, melodic popular song? And do you consider yourself a genre at all? And uh, what genre is this is important at all for you? Uh, I think. Uh... I think we put them up because uh, that was as as close as you get with, with this MySpace thing. I don't think we really think in terms of of uh, genre ever. We just play music, and if a song needs uh, to have a big shout, then we'll shout, and if it needs a whisper, then we'll whisper. And if it's like some days we feel like playing a fast song, and some days we feel like playing a a slow song. Um, So uh, I think it's easier for other people to say what genre yeah. we are. Yeah, I, think, I think people have already created this genre. I think it's called indie music, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think, yeah. Right. <laughs> I think you're right. I think you're right. It's just so broad. There's so much indie music out there. But yeah, we, I mean, I guess that's what we are. We're indie. Yeah, There's... because Music is Power podcast is actually straight indie music. It's playing only indie okay. music. Then we're definitely Then we're indie. Indie. <laughs> So what do you think about the indie music and the, what do you think about the independence that you think? I think the the word indie, I think it used to mean more. It used yeah. to be really genuinely independent music that wasn't on kind of major corporate labels and, and really kind of people that did stuff on their own. Um, and now it's become... A commercial for Saab. <laughs> yeah, well, it's, it's more... It is more commercial now, and it, there's more kind of big corporations that uh, that release indie music and that kind of thing. But I mean, I think there is still uh, a spirit of independence in the just the kind of freedom, I suppose, within indie music to to write whatever. Like, yeah. there's a real uh, broad selection of music that falls into the category. <laughs> And I guess some of that is very commercial and actually very indie in the traditional sense of the word. Um, but I think there's still a lot of interesting uh, in music out there. Because you can you can hear if a, if an artist plays from the heart, then if it's classical or or death or indie, then it's good music. If from the heart, then you then it's not so interesting. Mm. Yeah, and uh, I have saw that you have uh, concerts in London and Scotland. I'm not I'm sure. Or yeah. Yeah, and and one in Denmark. We... Denmark as well. And uh, do you do you think you will go somewhere else? I mean, uh, not in the how to say it, uh, such a uh, far from Bulgaria. <laughs> <laughs> For example. Uh... Yeah, uh, Germany or or Italy or. Yeah, well, we've been talking to um, tour 
uh, organizer in in Germany who might uh, organize a tour with possibly early next year. That uh, like that might happen next uh, the German tour. So we we're I mean we we love playing live and we we love traveling and meeting new people and going to new countries. So um, to combine the two would be. Yeah, so I mean, we 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 grab any opportunity that is given to us in terms of touring. So we really hope that we can come to Germany and maybe even closer to Bulgaria than that. Who knows? We were talking about our dream tour uh, the other day, and we all agreed that it was uh, the, around the Black Sea. <laughs> yeah, that would be cool. Yeah, that would be cool. Right? <laughs> and uh, maybe the last question for you is: uh, I wanted to uh, to tell me if you think of some. St- Story, some funny story when you have a concert and something funny happened. Can you think of something? Uh, well, I, one of the strangest concerts that we've done uh, was when we played in Stockholm Central Station. Um, at the train station? Just a, a, in the, the departure hall. Uh, there was like this new newspaper that had organized a, a day of events at the train station. Um, So we played there at like five o'clock in the afternoon and their sound system was really bad and we couldn't like bring all the stuff with us so we just had like a, we didn't have a full drum kit and uh, yeah, it was... (laughs) Nothing worked. (laughs) Nothing worked and they couldn't work out the PA system and we were standing on this little stage just right right in the centre of of the central station of the capital city of Sweden (laughs) and it felt really wrong. (laughs) Because the only people that were going past were like businessmen with briefcases, and uh, and they weren't really that interested in our indie. So and, uh, and, and the whole time we being interrupted by train leaving for blah 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 in four minutes, <laughs> train coming to track four in eight minutes. Yeah, that was our that was our weirdest. We're used to playing in like nice venues where people with beer and sit down and listen to the music, <laughs> but that wasn't happening at Central Station. Yeah, that's why that's why I love Sweden so much. <laughs> <laughs> you can hear amazing bands even in the train station. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay, we begin with uh, the concrete Swedish and uh, the, the cardigans. <laughs> Two Swedish. <laughs> <laughs> and the verb. Oh, slow. Boring. And boring. <laughs> <laughs> so slow. Oh. Boring is my favorite band. By Oh, I'm sorry, oh, I didn't like them. No. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I didn't hear anything, it's okay. Uh, what about uh, the Chemical Brothers? Yeah, sort of early 90s, it was a, uh, my favorite thing. Uh, and, uh, but, good dance uh, memories. Yeah, good memories, the Chemical Brothers. And Haven't Brod- listened to them much recently. And the uh, Prodigy? Yeah. yeah! Better dance memories. <laughs> <laughs> Drunken memories. Okay, and uh, what about uh, Red Hot Chili Peppers? Nah! Uh, <laughs> too much in love with themselves. Yeah, and they, they play too much of a strange fusion that isn't really anything. I think they're, they're overly hyped up and whatever they do, people will buy it and they've got lazy. And uh, what about... Uh, you mean? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, uh, Rage Against the Machine. Yeah. Uh. Fuck you, I won't do it! And uh, Cat Power? Uh. Yeah, I think yeah. that's the reaction. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's good. And uh, yeah, yeah, yes. Uh, Leo, can you, I, I saw him on a plane once and he was much smaller than I thought uh, but he has, he has very big hair <laughs> but good, uh, yeah funny like uh, good setting of the band. interesting instrument and the uh, last band is uh, the social services Here they lasers <laughs> uh, something to watch out for in the future